Okay, the Lord just spoke to me very clearly. Very, very clearly. And he gave me these verses. Daniel 12, 1. Matthew 24, 21. Revelation 12, 2. Revelation 13, 8. And he said, when World War III comes to an end, when this nuclear strike happens, it only lasts one hour. It's the hour of God's judgment. And he said, after that is... Great distress unequaled from the beginning until now and never to be equaled again. <clears throat> so, when he gave me this message, okay, he also told me to tell you that these verses, you need to get your Bible out and go through each one of them and put them each into context. Because it's the context of it that even clarifies even more. World War Three happens and then the mark of the beast comes out. But from the time that the hour of God's judgment, which is the sixth seal, and the uh, sky is rolled up like a scroll, this worldwide nuclear exchange, one, I predict it will last one hour. Okay, it's the hour of God's judgment. And two, based on the word of God, <clears throat> and that's how you know it's the sixth seal, okay, because there's a time of no wind at the end of it. Okay, so um, here's what the Lord gave me. And when this thing happens, it begins, okay, so right as World War III happens, as the nukes are coming down, that's when God says, great distress from the beginning until, and so here it is. Are you ready? Um, Daniel chapter, and the Lord told me to read this particular verse first. Da Daniel 12, 1. At that time, Michael the great prince who protects your people will arise. Now here's where it is. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. Okay? And he told me that right there is the same begins when those nukes come down. Okay? So... He also gave me Matthew 24, 21. And when I saw, when he gave this message to me, I saw a vision of myself reading these two verses. Okay, so I know it's God. Uh, 24, 21. For then there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. Those are the words of Jesus, Matthew 24. Now, anybody who teaches that that's not for us, that's for the Jews, one, you're going to find out because it's going to happen. Two, you are going to hell. You will take the mark of the beast if you are a false teacher who says that's not for us. Well, all scripture, you just choose which scriptures you want for you and throw out any scriptures you don't want for you. Sound like Muhammad to me. I'm just saying. All right, so, um, and Muhammad became a Christian before he became, bega began his own religion. Just saying. So, this is all about to happen, and when it does, great distress, unequaled from the beginning until now, and never to be equaled ever again, begins worldwide. Okay? And the other two verses of Scripture, Revelation 14, 12, Shows you what's what's about to happen in Revelation 13, 8, where it says, patient endurance and faithfulness. Revelation 14, 12 talks about, I think, the mark of the beast or something coming out. What is it? Oh, no. 14, 12 is faithfulness and patience. Revelation 13, 8. I don't even know what that is. That's what the Lord had me write it down. I better find out what that is. Revelation 13.8. I can't remember. 13.8. All the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. And then it says, If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity, anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword. Put that into context. So Revelation 13.8. So all these go together. The time of distress begins when World War III, the nukes come down. Then the mark of the beast comes out. 
then this calls for patient endurance. The whole time it's going to call, uh, require patient endurance and faithfulness. Okay? And remember that nuclear strike is the beast. The government and regime of the Antichrist attacking America. That's what that strike is. That's what Russia and China and North Korea are. They are the beast of revelation. That's why we have to go to war against them. We can't just say, okay, we surrender, just come and, uh, just come and take over. We can't just say to Kim Jong-un, okay, go ahead and take over South Korea. What's the first thing Kim Jong-un is going to do is kill everybody in high-level government and put everybody who won't bow down to his statue into a, into a, a some sort of FEMA camp. And they give us no choice but to at least fight for our life. And anyway, it's winnable. It's winnable, and here's why. We may not win the first battle, but we win the ultimate end battle if you have Jesus and you're saved. And you stand firm in your faith. But if you fall away, and people, you can disagree with me. This stuff is just about to happen. But after this World War III, nukes come down. It takes one hour. Then there's a time of no wind anywhere in the world. Then somewhere in there, Russia and China are going to invade. They're going to take over. With Iran, with North Korean soldiers intermingled, you're going to see a lot of Chinese soldiers. Vin and Russian, but they're all going to be focused and coming here to just take over. And it's going to be like two weeks. Actually, I don't know how it's all going to play out. I'm not trying to predict everybody's specific thing, what you're going to do tomorrow morning before 10 o'clock. I'm just saying, after that invasion, they're going to set up that mark of the beast. And then they're going to start collecting people who refuse that mark of the beast. And then they're going to start putting them to death. And then the the rapture is still 10 months away or a year away. I'm just saying, great distress. And once the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith, then the rapture happens. Then the, the 144,000 are left behind and they walk the earth and are systematically put to death for their faith. They're, each one of them is a martyr. And the last two, final two of them is the two witnesses. And then um, they're put to death for their faith. And uh, three and a half days later, they're raised from the dead. So the two witnesses have another... They have until... All this stuff is going to go down somewhere around September 2021. So the two witnesses have to walk this earth that whole time. Anybody who thinks they want to be one of the two witnesses, are you kidding me? You don't know. You need to find out. And you can disagree with me and say, I think you're wrong. I disagree with your doctrine. You're going to find out. We're all going to find out. We're all going to die eventually and stand before God. And he's going to either hold us accountable for having taught false teaching in the end days and misled thousands of people or... He's going to commend you and say, you sounded the alarm, you listened to my voice, you were obedient to my word. You know, I'm just saying, so anybody wants to come against the prophet of God, it's all good. Bring it. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says that fire comes out of their mouth and burns their enemies. And that's everybody who serves God, not just the two witnesses. But in the in the end of days, it actually literally happens in the natural realm. Whereas, if you're saved, you can burn the devil in the spirit. I'm just saying. So get ready. Um, take special note. Do a Bible study on those and put them all into context. And get ready because when those nukes come down, we got some more fulfillment of scriptures. Amen. We're going to see the fulfillment of the mark of the beast. We're going to see the fulfillment of uh, patient endurance and faithfulness. We're going to see the fulfillment of all of this. The, the Antichrist is going to come on the scene for real, and then it's going to be, oh, told ya type thing. You know, and everybody who is a false prophet and said, oh, it's not him. <laughs> I hope you live to see the day. Ha, 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 ha.